This is the Toyota Yaris Cross, a Japanese B crossover designed and assembled in France with the powertrain made in Poland. What could possibly go wrong? Actually, those Fiat 500s Europeans love so much are made in Poland. And so are radiators for those BMW 7 Series and Rolls-Royce Ghosts. Glass, seats and all sorts of components in cars you drive these days are probably made in Poland as well. So, if there's anything wrong with the Yaris Cross, blame it on the French. Jokes aside, B crossovers are the hot trend right now. Some are better and some are meh. What's the Yaris Cross like? I'm here to tell you how it is, so subscribe, hit notify, hit share with your mother, who knows, maybe she'll like me. The Toyota Yaris Cross is a longer and taller version of the Yaris with optional all-wheel drive and it's the all-wheel drive that sets the Yaris Cross apart from most B crossovers. The only one I can think of in this size and price range is the Suzuki Vitara. Everything else, like the Kia Stonic, is front-wheel drive. If you want all-wheel drive, you have to look one size up to Hyundai Kona or VW T-Roc. The Yaris Cross all-wheel drive system is a hybrid setup. The rear axle is driven by an additional electric motor, like in hybrid Lexus SUVs or PHEVs made by other brands. More about that in a moment when we go for a drive in the Polish mountains. Meanwhile, let's look inside the boot. Now here's an innovation by Toyota, the power tailgate now lifts in just 5 to 6 seconds, that's twice as quick as in the RAV4 and guess what, nobody got hurt by the tailgate just swinging open! The boot volume in the Yaris Cross is over 100 liters more than in the regular Yaris, in the front-wheel drive version we get 397 liters and in the all-wheel drive it's 320 because of the electric motor. Also all-wheel drive gets less storage under the floor and you cannot drop the floor. I've seen some Australian reviews with a mini spare, but in Europe you're likely to get a repair kit. Check your local market. In the front-wheel drive version, you can drop the floor. Also, the floor splits to become some sort of a cargo arrangement system. I'm not a fan of dividing the floor in this direction because it's harder to drop it with just one hand. But with a boot this shallow, it makes sense to split it like this rather than across. Across, across. Also, I like the soft cargo cover because it just saves space and you can just pretty much put it away anywhere when you fold the rear seats. I've seen something like this before in a Renault Twingo and this is actually a pretty clever feature. Thanks to the double floor you get a flat loading area with the seats down, however folding the seats may require pushing the front seats forward. In the new Skoda Fabia you could drop the rear backrests even with the front seats all the way back. And just in case you were wondering, the Far Eastern Yaris Cross gets shopping bag hooks but no 12 volt socket in the boot, whereas the European version gets the 12 volt socket but no shopping bag hooks. The Yaris Cross is 24 cm longer than the ordinary Yaris, but the difference is in the overhangs. The wheelbase remains the same at 256 cm. Unfortunately, also the rear doors are the same, meaning they don't open very wide. It's less of a problem in the Yaris Super Mini, but the Yaris Cross is supposed to be a more family-oriented alternative, so dealing with children in the back could be a pain in the back. And that's not the only limitation. In the back, it's pretty much like in the regular Yaris. Not great, not terrible. Younger teenagers will fit no problem. The longer their legs, the more you may want to consider something larger, because headroom should not be an issue. There are still no AC vents, no USB ports, so the kids will have to, I don't know, run a cable from the boot to stay in charge 
of their social media lives. The door pockets are still small, half a liter bottle at best. However, higher trim models get 40-20-40 split rear seat with cup holders. There is no separate armrest, you just drop the entire middle part like in the Jeep Renegade. In the front, at first glance, this looks like the Yaris cockpit, but there are several differences. For example, there is no shelf above the glove box on the passenger side. And then, instead of this kind of tunnel affair like in the Yaris here, you get a digital dashboard large screen like in the CHR or the RAV4. Now, I looked at the spec sheet and this doesn't seem to have anything to do with safety systems available on higher trim cars, so it's purely style. I like the tunnel dials. Do you prefer those or do you want this larger display? Let me know in the comment section below. Another difference is the 9-inch infotainment display. This is called the Toyota Connect infotainment system. And on the lesser models, you get the Toyota Smart Touch 7 or 8-inch display, like in the Yaris. Now, the Smart Connect uh, has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but if you don't have wireless charging, you need to plug in. And this is where the only USB port in the car is. Now, the Smart Connect infotainment system is uh, different. This is a first drive event, and apparently this is still a beta, an advanced beta, but a beta version of the system, so it's not as good as it could be. It's better than the Smart Touch, but that's hardly an achievement. Below the screen is a second smartphone cubby, the one without a charger. Lower are physical AC controls, heated seat buttons and the aforementioned USB port. And at the bottom of the console is the wireless charger and a 12 volt socket. On the tunnel are the gear lever, hybrid mode buttons and cup holders. The all-wheel drive version also gets a rotary dial for choosing surface types. The folding armrest with small storage is identical like in the Yaris, also identical as the glove box. Door pockets are on the small side as well. In the regular Yaris, I found out about the heated steering wheel because I was bumping my water bottle against the button every time I removed the bottle from the door pocket. By the way, the seats are comfortable. In the Yaris Cross, there is also lumbar support adjustment. The Yaris didn't have that. In Poland, we get the Yaris Cross as a three-cylinder, 1.5-liter dynamic force petrol or a 1.5-liter dynamic force hybrid. The regular petrol is front-wheel drive only. It comes with a six-speed manual or a CVT, and it has 125 horsepower. The hybrid is a front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, and it has eCVT and 116 horsepower. This is the so-called classic hybrid or full hybrid, where the petrol engine and the electric motor work together for optimum efficiency. It is possible to drive in electric mode only, but only on very short distances. Other types of hybrid powertrains include the increasingly popular mild hybrids, which are glorified stop and start systems, or the more expensive and complicated plug-in hybrids. The latter let you drive several dozen kilometers on electric power alone and recharging from an electric socket. However, if there is no time or place to recharge, they will operate like regular hybrids as well. Toyota used to have a PHEV version of the Prius and recently it also offers the RAV4 PHEV or Prime. The latter is also available as a Suzuki Across, a rebadging exercise. This here is the classic hybrid setup so the traction battery is recharged with excess energy from the engine or kinetic energy recuperated during coasting and braking. In the mountains there is a lot of potential to recoup energy. You may want to consider not only a hybrid car but even an electric one. This is a first drive event, so my fuel economy doesn't necessarily reflect real-life situations. Uh, now, after 
a few hours of driving back and forth here on these test routes uh, i'm now averaging 4.6 liters per 100 kilometers toyota claims 4.5 or to 5 liters per 100 kilometers so that's all right toyota also says the front wheel drive hybrid yaris cross will do 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 11.2 seconds unfortunately i didn't find a flat straight long enough to put this claim to the test although the yaris cross is taller and has higher ground clearance than the regular yaris it feels similar to drive it's agile and it likes to take corners toyota engineers have shown us what they are capable of when they gave us the gr yaris the yaris cross could also do great things with a 260 horsepower engine and adjustable all-wheel drive that can send up to 70 percent of torque to the rear That being said, the all-wheel drive Yaris Cross can send up to 60% of torque to the rear, but that's only to improve traction on slippery surface, not to power slide the crap out of it. But let's face it, you're considering a Yaris Cross because you want more luggage space, not necessarily more traction. Speaking of more luggage space, when comparing the Yaris Cross to the regular Yaris data, I noticed the hybrid Yaris Cross can carry 400 kilograms and the regular Yaris can carry 425 kilograms. Is that a lot or not? Four guys my size and some luggage and you've exceeded the gross vehicle mass. Never mind emissions, but that also impacts wear of brakes and suspension etc i asked toyota about it and yes it's wltp emissions blah 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 however so far toyota motor poland hasn't encountered a warranty claim resulting from overloading the vehicle within the homologated number of passengers so you can take your buddies along on the other hand even a 2 plus 2 family shouldn't weigh more than 250 kilograms leaving some 150 kilograms for luggage you'll be fine unless daddy wants to take his buddies fishing but then they better take the highlander should you find yourself on a less than perfect road surface the suspension can be tad too noisy visibility is less than stellar and uh, yeah the soundproofing is also not very good like in the regular Yaris also here too much noise gets from the outside into the cabin and then there is a the sound of the engine when it recharges the traction battery which I shall demonstrate right now Driver aids, like in the Yaris, work better than in the old Toyota models. Finally, they help me more than annoy me, and I can rely on them more. Higher trims also get a head-up display and a proper one on the windscreen, rather than a piece of plastic coming out of the dash. The backup camera is standard except for the lowest trim. The resolution is still early Nokia quality. I have a feeling Toyota and Mazda decided anything will pass, as long as you can see there's an obstacle behind you. The parking sensors, front and rear, are available only on higher trim models. There's also a 360 camera and Toyota teammate park assist, but that's available only on the top trim cars. Price of the Toyota Yaris Cross start at €22,700 for the front-wheel drive hybrid. A similarly specced regular Yaris is about €4,000 cheaper. This is the front-wheel drive Premier Edition for about €32,000. The Toyota Yaris Cross is just another B crossover. I think Toyota is missing an opportunity here by not offering a standout feature that people actually need or think they might need like Ford Puma's underfloor storage with a drain plug. Who wouldn't want one? If I were you, I'd look at others and what they have to offer or wait for the Yaris Cross prices to drop a couple of grand after the launch. And how do you like the Toyota Yaris Cross? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.